Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start a successful tech blog. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell if this video or any other video on the channel helps you out. So basically what we're going to cover today is we're going to go over how, what is a tech blog step by step with a few examples, how to pick a niche and doing something that's incredibly important when you first get started, which is called niching down. I'll spend some time talking about that. And then I'm actually going to walk you through the steps of setting up your WordPress website with the first link in the description. So what you will need in order to have a tech blog, and I'll go into this in more detail, is you're going to need a domain name and you're going to need web hosting. When you click the first link in the description, you'll be able to set all of that up. In fact, when you click that first link, you'll be able to get your domain name for free for the first year but there will be a part in this video where I show you how to set everything up step by step it takes less than 10 minutes but you absolutely need to do it so after that we are going to install WordPress install a WordPress theme I'll talk a little bit more about what that means and some important changes that you absolutely have to make when you first set up your website if you don't make these changes you are going to run into some trouble so make sure you watch until this point to learn what to do to not run into some trouble. After that, we're gonna talk about writing and how to start writing and different ways to monetize your site and why it's important to share on social media in the very beginning. Also, why you need to do more writing and then be sure to click that first link as I alluded to a little bit earlier so that we can get started. So let's go ahead and just back up just a little bit and talk about what is a technology blog. You're basically going to just create content where you solve people's problems for the tech space. For example, people may want to know the best 10 headphones for um, listening to music, and you're simply going to create that type of content. Now, it's important when you create a tech blog, and I'm just going to show you an example here. It's important that when you create a tech blog at the very beginning, you're going to want to niche down. And niching down is simply just taking a subset or a subsection of the market. For example, if we look at this website here, they have a bunch of different niches. The Verge, it's a big website, and so they can afford to have a bunch of niche, a bunch of different niches. For example, if we look at this, they have the cell phone niche, which is in tech. They also have video games, they've got computers. If you're just getting started, you need to pick one of these verticals, for example, let's say video games, and you need to focus on computers in the very beginning. The reason being, is because tech is incredibly competitive. And if you're not focusing on a, a niche and niching down, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second, you are going to struggle to find success. So the first thing that you absolutely wanna do, if we go back over here, is to pick a niche. And your niche, for this example, could be video games, it could be computers, it can be programming, it can be anything, as long as you pick a niche and then niche down. For example, if we're talking about programming, maybe you only wanna talk about Node.js, or maybe you only wanna talk about microphones which i'm speaking to right now very important that you pick a niche and then niche down for example you could do best microphones for podcasting or youtube or you know just walking down the street and so on so um two very important things that you need to pick a niche and then niche down just to kind of illustrate this a little bit better i'm going to show you uh, how competitive it can be with a tool that I use called Ahrefs. It's basically a tool that I use to help me find different keywords. When I search, when I click, when I sign in here, I am simply just going to type in technology and you're gonna see it's incredibly competitive. However, we can find different ways around it. So if I just type in technology, all right, so we type in technology and you see that 95 there, that's how difficult it would be to compete for keywords in the technology space. Now that is on a scale from zero to 100. 95 means it's gonna be very difficult for a brand new website to get any traction whatsoever. So what we could do, instead of just talking about technology, let's just type in video games. So video games is part of the, the tech niche, but that's gonna be incredibly competitive as well. As you can see, not as competitive as something like technology. Now within video games, you could talk about Xbox, but that's gonna be competitive as well. Instead of talking about Xbox, maybe we talk about The Division. Uh, the Division is a video game uh, that came out a few years ago. So I'm gonna type in The Division 2, and you're gonna see it's even easier. But then when I click on matching terms, you're gonna see there's opportunities within The Division to create content. As you can see, people, uh, are creating content and there's opportunity. So just looking at this from a visual standpoint, if 
it's green, it means it's relatively easy to rank and compete. The darker the color, the more difficult it's going to be. Yellow means it's really difficult. Um, and orange or red is going to be impossible. But as you can see, there's much more opportunity when we look at the division, which is a niche down version of the technology space where you can start gaining some opportunity. And you could do this with any technology based thing. So uh, that is what niching down is and why it's important from a visual standpoint. So the next step is actually to install your platform and get a domain name. So what we're gonna do and what we need to do is we need to get web hosting. Now web hosting is a block of space called a server that we're actually going to rent from a web hosting company. When you click that first link, it's gonna take you over to Bluehost, which is the web hosting company that I prefer. And when you sign up with Bluehost, they're gonna give you a free domain for the first year. So go ahead and click the first link right now. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click get started. What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here, you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name It's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're gonna get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now make sure again, you wanna pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're gonna see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on. Um, but Again, enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. If you don't leave it checked, you're gonna get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right, so I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. Just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. Write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're gonna have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do wanna note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're gonna move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all and I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is gonna do a little bit of work in the background for you and we're just gonna actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on, start a blog but for the next step just click skip because we know what we're doing and i'm actually going to tell you what to do so that we can get up and running click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on just click skip here and click skip here and then just pick the first one in the far left make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you they have both free and premium themes which i'll talk about in just a moment so right now it's actually creating your wordpress website in just a few moments, you're gonna click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there, you'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right, so we click log in, and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work, but now we have our website as you can see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna log in and delete a few plugins, because right now it has the coming soon and so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's gonna say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like, but for everyone else outside of your network, it's gonna say coming soon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um, other plugins that are already activated, and then we can go through and make the necessary changes, which I'll cover in just a moment. So we're gonna deactivate them and then delete them. Now you wanna make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website. The more plugins you have, the slower your website's going to respond and, and function, and you're gonna lose out on ranking. So make sure you have a lean setup, very few plugins, 
and then move on. As you can see right now, I'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need. Uh, if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're gonna talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them, and then we're actually gonna start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right, so now that we have Bluehost set up and WordPress installed, let's talk about some things that we need to change. First, you wanna change your WordPress theme. As you can see here, I have theme. Theme is the way that your website looks and feels. This is a theme that has been installed on top of WordPress. Now you do have a default theme that comes with it, but I recommend that you get a premium theme because a premium theme has more features included. And you can use a website like ThemeForce to find premium theme. So I'm just going to search theme forest here. We're going to click on it. And as you can see, there are tons of different themes that you could buy and install. Now these are considered premium themes. You don't have to get a premium theme, but it's going to make your website look so much better. So what we could do is we could type in tech and you're going to see there are a bunch of themes for the technology space. Again, you don't have to use these, but I like the way that these look. And again, they come with additional features. As you can see, you can get a premium theme for as little as $20 or as high as maybe 90. So what you'll do is you'll find a theme that you're interested in. You're going to add it to your cart. You're going to buy it. When you buy it, you're going to be able to download this theme to your computer. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to unzip that file that you get. And when you unzip the file, you're actually going to get another zip folder or a zip file that you're going to actually put into WordPress, which will actually change the way that your website looks. And to do that, we're going to simply go over to appearance. We're going to go to themes. We're going to click on add new and then we're going to click on upload theme now here you can either drag and drop that theme that you just unpacked so that second zip file or you can click on choose file and upload it from there and then click on install and then click on activate once you do that you're going to have a different looking website than the original one that you saw in the previous section uh, so very important that you get a theme and get a theme that you're comfortable with that you don't mind looking at so we've got the theme installed which is right here the next step is we need to make some important changes now very important that you make these changes on your account or else you're going to struggle to find success what we're going to do is we're going to go down to settings we're going to click on general the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our site title our site title is going to be keyword friendly or based on our niche so we could we could say our site title is um the tech laboratory and the tag tagline could be um your one-stop shop for all things tech related. And then we can go down and change the time zone to your current time zone, click on save changes. The next thing that we wanna do, go down to writing, we're comfortable with everything in writing. We do wanna to go to reading. Reading is gonna be important. You wanna make sure that your reading settings is set to your latest post. And then you also wanna go down and make sure that this is unchecked. So where it says search engine visibility, leave it unchecked. If you check this box, you will not be discovered by Google or Bing or Yahoo, and you will struggle to find visitors. So make sure you leave it unchecked, click on save. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna go over to permalinks. And here is another very important thing that you wanna do. Right now, your links are set to plain. We wanna change those to post name. And the reason being, this is gonna help us get discovered by Google. This is going to help us with search engine optimization. And what happens is, um, when you create a post, the title of your post is actually gonna show up right here. So for example, if we were creating content about the division, my website would be webhostingrewind.com forward slash the division to tips and tricks. Now, we want that to be there just like that because people are searching division to tips and tricks and we wanna get discovered via organic. And if we go over to The Verge, you're gonna see they should be doing the exact same thing. This should all be based on search intent or what your customers are searching. So if we look at this, it says Samsung Fold Flip, Future Galaxy S Past. They didn't do a great job, but they're large enough where it doesn't really matter. Smaller websites, you do need to make sure that you have your um, your your configuration at post name. So what we're gonna do next is make sure that we jump back over and click save all the way down here, and then we can start writing. So when we start writing, go to posts and go to all posts, and then click on add new. This is where you're going to create brand new content. And what you should do, your post title should be your keyword. So if we are creating content about the division two early access, we want to make sure that our post 
starts off with the the division two early access and then we're going to say how to play uh one day early we'll say and people that are interested in people that are interested in the division are going to want to know how to play one one day early and so we are simply just going to make sure that these are capitalized just like that and then we're going to start writing now believe it or not the writing is probably where people have the biggest challenges now before i actually write out a blog post i like to do who what when where why how i like to apply those five questions to my keyword so the division two early access who am I targeting? So people that are interested in the division two, what do they want to know? They want to know how to get their hands on early access. Where can they get it? Give them the valuable information. If you can go through and spend about five or 10 minutes answering who, what, when, where, why, how, you will put yourself in a better position to write much faster. So go through, write your blog post. And the cool thing with the way that WordPress is set up is you can just go through and you can make this an H2 by clicking this plus sign and then changing it to heading. Now you wanna make sure that you have H2s to let your audience know what the upcoming section is about and then use paragraphs to actually answer the question. And you're just gonna write until you answer the question fully. Now one of the biggest questions that I always get is how long should my blog post be? The simple answer is it should be as long as it needs to be. Now if the division two early access should only be 200 words to answer the question fully, that's how long it should take. You shouldn't write a 4,000 word blog post on something that should only be answered, can only be answered in one or 2,000 words. So make sure it's only as long as it needs to be. And so you're simply gonna go through, you're gonna click on publish, and when you click on publish, it is going to be live for the world to see. And so we, are in the writing phase we're just going to go over to the next step which is figuring out how to make money and there are a number of ways to make money with your tech blog so if we go over to the verge they have ads on their website as you can see here they've got ads and they're making money that way the first ad network that you can work with is google adsense they don't have really any requirements as long as you're writing content safe for work and you can get started right away they will only pay you pennies on the dollar. It's not a lot of money to get started. But once you start getting serious traffic, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 page views per month, you can move on to Ezoic and AdThrive and Media.net. There are tons of ad companies out there. Another way that you can make money is simply collecting emails. When you collect the emails, you can refer people back over to your blog post and that you can make more money that way. You can also become an affiliate. If you're in the tech space, a lot of, a lot of blogs are affiliates for Amazon Associates, for example, if we click on, let's see if we can find one, but if we clicked on one of these and it took us over to Amazon, they're an affiliate marketer for Amazon. So you get paid a commission when you recommend products or services when customers buy them. Um, one really good example of it is if we go over to CNET, we'll go to CNET.com, and a lot of the products that they have, especially review products, are, are affiliate products have affiliate links to them. So as you can see here, it says $39 at, at Amazon. If we click the link and we buy this, it's the uh, CNET actually gets paid a commission. So know that going forward, you can be an affiliate. You can also be an affiliate for like Best Buy, um, um, Newegg. There's just a ton of them, B&H, Photo. There's a ton of them, Target. There's a ton of them out there that you could be an affiliate for. You can also sell your own digital and physical products right on your WordPress website. That's outside the scope of this video, but it's not terribly difficult to do that as well. So there are a number of ways that you can make money simply with your blog. Now, if we go back over here to our slide deck, you want to make sure that you're sharing it on social media. The reason why you want to share your website on social media is because it's not going to rank in Google for at least three months. And if you are sharing it on, on social media, uh, you can share it in relevant subreddits as long as you have permission. You can start a Facebook, you can share it on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn. Uh, you can help push that, shorten that process. So you can help get your content ranked faster, especially if people are clicking on your links and reading your blog post. And then you wanna make sure that you are writing continuously. I think you should write every day or every other day until you get 50 blog posts on your website. Now, the reason why I choose 50 is because it's a good number to gauge how well you're writing and how well the writing resonates with your, your target audience. So you write 50 articles over the span of 100 days, you should start seeing some rankings somewhere. And if you're not getting any rankings, you're probably doing something wrong. Maybe it's a, a bad keyword research, maybe you're picking the wrong topics, but writing 50 is gonna give you a pretty good idea 
and that is really it so you want to make sure that you click the first link in the description watch this video again if you need additional help but be sure to like subscribe ring the bell so that you're notified when i upload a brand new video thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow